Like the Riemann hypothesis to which it's related, Skew's number has to do with the distribution of prime numbers. Born in the Transvaal to an American-born mother and an English father in 1899, Stanley Skews took a degree in civil engineering at the University of Cape Town before heading to Cambridge to study mathematics. At King's College, where among his contemporaries and rowing partners was Alan Turing, he studied for his BA, MA and finally PhD. His doctoral supervisor, John Littlewood, was an eminent number theorist and close collaborator of G. H. Hardy, who brought the Indian genius Ramanujan to England. It was Littlewood who encouraged Skews to pursue research into prime numbers. Mathematicians had searched long and hard for a formula that would generate prime numbers, without success. However, they had found that the occurrence of primes isn't haphazard. Rather, there are rules governing their distribution. Their density decreases when moving to larger and larger numbers. A result known as the prime number theorem was first proposed by German mathematician Karl Gauss in about 1792, when he was just a teenager. But it wasn't until 1896 that the theorem was proved independently by French mathematicians Jacques Hadamard and Charles de la Vallée Poisson. According to this theorem, the density of primes around any number x is approximately 1 over log to base e x, where log to base e x is the natural logarithm of x. So, around 100 we'd expect about 1 in 5 numbers to be prime, whereas around 1000 this falls to about 1 in 7. The prime number theorem makes it possible to estimate how many primes there are less than any given number n. In fact, for large values of n, the value predicted by the theorem is remarkably close to the actual number of primes. For example, there are exactly 50,847,534 primes less than 1 billion, whereas the theorem predicts a value of 50,849,235, just 1,701 or 0.0033% more. The estimated value from the prime number theorem is consistently a little bit higher than the actual number of primes, even when n is enormous. In the absence of evidence to the contrary, Mathematicians assume this would always be the case, without exception. But then Littlewood came up with a proof that at some point the overestimates would stop and underestimates would take over for a while before there was a switch back to overestimates and so on, back and forth, forever. Littlewood didn't know when the first crossover would happen. However, his student Skews managed to shed some light on this question. Skews showed that the prime number theorem must flip to giving underestimates before n reaches the value 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 34. This spectacularly big number, Skews' number, assumes that the Riemann hypothesis is true. The Riemann hypothesis effectively says that prime numbers are just about as organized and predictable as it's possible for them to be given their nature. Skews calculated that if the hypothesis were false, then the prime number theorem would first switch to underestimating the number of primes when n was even larger, about 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 964 which became known as Skews's second number. G. H. Hardy once described Skews's number as the largest number which has ever served any definite purpose in mathematics. Although it's long since lost that distinction, its immense size does underscore an important point that just because something is held true as far as anyone has managed to test, doesn't guarantee it'll be true in every conceivable case. This is one of the reasons mathematicians are never happy 
until they've found a rigorous proof that will stand for all time. Since Skews published his results, the lower and upper bounds, depending on whether the Riemann hypothesis is assumed to be true or not, have been drastically reduced. For the past half century or more, computers have been used in these calculations. In 1966, American mathematician Sherman Lehman showed that somewhere between the values for n of 1.53 times 10 to the 1165 and 1 1.65 times 10 to the 1165, there are more than 10 to the 500 consecutive integers for which the prime number theorem underestimates the actual number of primes up to that point. No one's yet identified a specific number where the crossover first happens. The most recent work published on the subject by Stephanie Zegowitz of the University of Manchester in 2010 found that the first time the prime number theorem gives an underestimate is for some value of n that's less than 1.3972 times 10 to the 316. Although still big by everyday standards, this value is minuscule compared with the original skews number.